find yourself in the Beachview area of Pittsburgh, check out the official pizza of this show, Slice on Broadway, sharing an abnormal obsession with pizza we can relate to. Check them out at sliceonbroadway.com and tell them this show sent you. I'm hungry, spark, but I ain't starving yet. Jane for the pain, cocktail, dollar set. Never said I was a gangster or a thug, but I'm an animal. Pizza for the taste of the pizza. Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter. It's your Indie Mayhem show, the show where we talk indie wrestling or independent things that may involve wrestling. We can stretch that a little bit. It's our show, damn it. Uh, production guy here in the Pittsburgh area, uh, working with the International Wrestling Cartel, Renegade Wrestling Alliance, IndieWrestling.us, and our, our a lot of other friends and projects and documentaries, including the fantastic... Uh, and interesting and sometimes controversial Legend of Virgil and his uh, traveling merchandise table you can get over at IndieWrestling.us in digital download form. Uh, with me is not Eamon Payton. He is not Eamon to pleasing. He is, uh, he instead, he is the Rizdefer. He is Riz of InsertCoinToBegin.com. He's joining mm-hmm. us for a very specific reason because you are a video game junkie and you I are am. our expert of the day. I'm an expert. Sorg, <laughs> thank you for having me on this show. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? About I, I, a month or two. On this show? I, on I, this I, show. We, I can't remember having you on this show. Oh, I guess after IWC and stuff. Oh, yeah, so that makes IWC's sense. After and all that and stuff. We're, we're, and whenever we've, had, we've had talks about certain wrestling and... Certain wrestling certain, and mothers getting people, yes, mothers getting yes. pile driven in the middle of the ring, etc. I don't, I don't, I don't think our guests would like that to be. Used I don't know. It may be an me. add-on pack in the long run. You never know. We could maybe inspire <laughs> it, them it to do be. this. Uh, well, but yeah, I've I've been dabbling in the uh, video game in, in the mobile game that we were going to talk about here. So awesome, shortly. awesome. We'll get into some '80s wrestling in a moment, but first, please check out WrestlingMayhemShow.com, where this show, as well as other wrestling uh, properties that we're doing around here, uh, live. You can subscribe to us on audio, video formats all over the place, and you can check us out. Drop us a line. 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline for the voicemail or good times at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. And uh, please join us on the social media at Mayhem Show on the Twitters, Wrestling Mayhem Show on Facebook and the Facebook group. And big ups to our friend Basic Sickness at BasicSickness.com for the intro and outro music. Go check it out. Download some free music. Watch some music videos and say hi. And maybe find a sticker on a trash can like I did on the north side last week and uh, take a picture and send it to him. He gets really excited about that. Uh, so thanks to him for providing the music. So let's get 80s. Let's get neon. Let's go. Let's throw back a little here, Riz. We have with us yes. on the phone line Chris Osk. Of uh, 80s Mania Wrestling, uh, you can find it at 80smaniawrestling.com or the app on iPhone and Android stores. How you doing today, Chris? I'm doing great, guys. How you doing? That is not a picture of him if you're on the video. I, or is this? Is this an artist rendition of what you look like? I'm not seeing it, but the chances are, if it's a big muscular man, yes, that's me. Okay, okay. Yeah, okay the good. blonde one. I believe, I believe the name is Brother Dude of that character. Oh, oh, dude, Brohan. Dude, bro. Dude, Brohan. Dude, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's not me. That's that's um, that's a, a mishmash of a couple of uh, my favorite uh, '80s culture icons. That's awesome. Um, so yeah. let, let's get started. First of all, if you're doing this, if you're doing a game on '80s wrestling, and you guys have to be super. I, I think I know half the answers to this uh, right off the mm-hmm. bat, but we like to kind of uh, get into, uh, if you're doing the thing that we have you on the show for, you have to be a wrestling fan. For you, what was kind of your introduction to pro wrestling? Like, what was the thing that said, ooh, this is a thing for me? You know, I mean, it goes back to childhood, um, mm-hmm. of course, and I, I can't remember the specific thing that I saw first, but I do remember just um, being exposed to stuff on MTV. I remember the music video, the WWF music video on MTV. I remember the rock and wrestling cartoon. So it was strangely enough, I, it was, it wasn't wrestling per se that introduced me to wrestling, but mentions of wrestling on other eighties programming, I guess you'd say. Um, and then a simple connecting the dots kind of led me to, um, you know, those Saturday and Sunday morning, I guess it was around noon, maybe, those shows, um, you know, sandwiched by Saturday morning cartoons. So that was probably it. 
<laughs> that's awesome. That's awesome. So I, yeah. I mean, so so you're um, and, and I forgot. Remind me again. What is your position here uh, with uh, 80s Mania Wrestling here? Essentially, creator, uh, okay. producer of the app. Um, awesome. You know the the. The writing and, and conceptual stuff essentially comes from me. And, um, you know, I, I had a team of, oh, boy, of a bunch of people who um, who really helped out along the way with, the you know, the development of the app and the art mm-hmm. and uh, some of the game design stuff. But essentially just concepts and whatnot came from me. So Awesome. So for uh, those uninitiated and maybe not seeing some of the imagery going on, uh, if you're on the audio sure. version here of the Indie Mayhem show, uh, and I got a video of your ad kind of playing here. What is? What are we expecting? What, what do you get when you download '80s Mania Wrestling on on the uh, on your uh, uh, the device? Yeah. So um, essentially, what you're getting is a is a Booker sim. You know, a business sim uh, based in, in in the pro wrestling world. Um, and you know, the presentation we were going for is, is retro, you know, is old NES. So you're going to kind of have, um, that pixelated feel, you know, that, that kind of chip toony, you know, soundtrack and, um, you know, basic graphics, but, um, at, at the heart of it, it's a strategy game and it's a collectible card game. And, Mm -hmm. and what you're basically doing is collecting cards and, you know, running your own wrestling promotion, um, set in the eighties, um, and then just totally jam packed with all sorts of, you know, pop culture references and, and gags and, you know, little wink, wink, nod, nod type stuff. Um, you know, you'll recognize, I assume if you're a fan of, uh, you know, wrestling and eighties pop culture, you'll recognize a lot of the stuff that's in there. And, uh, we try to do it all in fun, you know, um, we like to say it's, you know, it's a parody of, uh, that, that influential stuff from back then. I mean, I mean, the first thing I see right off the bat is uh, the Red Pirate Ro- Rogers, which is <laughs> the homage to uh, uh, Princess Bride, which is probably one of my favorite movies. And I was like, oh, this is awesome because it's <laughs> the 80s right now. Yeah. So I'm, yes. Oh, right on. Even yeah. though he's not really that good right now for me, but, you know, mm-hmm. Just, mm-hmm. I'm just giving it time. Yeah, and, and that's the stuff, um, you know, with, with the characters um, – you know, that that's that's what we were going for was not only grabbing the obvious, you know, not only going for the Hulk Hogan's and Macho Man's and stuff like that, but but just kind of taking those movies, like you mentioned, The Princess Bride, mm-hmm. that was a favorite of mine as well, and, and sort of thinking, okay, what could we do with that? You know, and then there was the Dread Pirate Roberts, and we thought, well, we can't use that, you know, but let's spin it a little bit and give them a kind of a wrestling gimmick, but um you know, make it recognizable enough that, you know, that fans of, of, of that movie or, or, or fans, of, again, of that era um, are able to recognize it and kind of get a good laugh out of it, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's been really fun. So I'm not a person that gets into um, manager sims. I, I've tried some in the past, um, and it just, uh, like, that I'm not an RPG guy, you know, and I feel like there's a little bit of a connection there. Um, but the artwork, again, artwork I'm loving, the, the theme really kind of hooks me and i think as a longtime wrestler fan i think i think that's what's really gonna uh make a lot of people hop on here um so so versus sometimes when other others do like well this is kind of like that wrestler you know and it just seems like a weird facsimile of it like right. it fits with this like we said with the, with the red pro red pirate roberts which i determined automatically when he popped up i'm like oh this is gonna be my champion uh, so <laughs> like it, 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 in, like say, there's a lot of knots to something like this. Um, so getting into, you know, we talk about kind of on here, uh, how hard it is to get into pro wrestling or whatever other aspects our guests are getting into. Um, is this, first of all, is this your first app on the platform? This is, this is, I've actually been, um, in the gaming industry for a few years, but this is, um, this is our first app and, um, you know, this is the first project that was um you know launched independently by myself by my by my company so Mm -hmm. yep awesome awesome i I say really clean uh as far as that goes uh but i guess there's not really much for animations and such on there so that has to make it a little bit easier right oh for sure you know and that that was kind of one of the um the benefits to doing something that had that retro presentation Mm -hmm. is is you know and, and actually going into it um also sort of realizing okay we're not making an action game you know we're not making right uh, we're, we're not setting out to to uh, make a game in which you're, you know, having two guys wrestle in the ring. We're, you know, knowingly going into this looking to make 
a collectible card game, a wrestling booker, you know, business sim. And then laying on top of that, the fact that it was purposely retro looking. Yeah, it, it, it made sense. And it, and it was um, a little bit easier to develop, especially, you know, for the first app. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. And say, so, Riz, you 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 spent a little bit of time on this, right? So um, I have. I mean, what what are your kind of takeaways from this game over over the bitch you've had with it? Um, it, it's very, I I I, I like it, uh, but it is very like in depth to get your intention on there. Like you can't just go, okay, I'm going to put these wrestlers over here and have them fight. You have to make sure their their attributes match, or else you'll get you'll get a a bad rec, a bad rating, a bad, bad money going, no money going through nothing. And you can't improve yourself unless you have that money and going through there. Um, which is really good when, when you're, when your guys are like, uh, Arizona chance and the tennis pro, which you want to make sure, uh, is the bottom curtain jerkers. Mm -hmm. Um, but other than that, I, I, I enjoy this tremendously, man. This is this is an awesome game to play. Just to, well, thanks, this is a time waster. <laughs> yeah, you know, and, and just to, to add on to what you were mentioning, uh, you know, that was another intent, and I'm glad to see that, you know, you, you mentioned it and mm -hmm. um, that that people that, um you know, I've, I've talked to that, that play the game and that like the game have mentioned the strategy aspect of it. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are, you know, plenty of booking sims out there where, you know, you essentially have – you know, an entire roster at your disposal, and it allows you to just kind of, you know, book guy A versus guy B and click simulate and, you know, get a result. Well, we tried to go a little bit further with it and, and set up a strategy aspect to it. So, you know, as you were mentioning, there's only so many sl segment slots on a show, mm -hmm. you know, and your, and your wrestler card or any of your cards for that matter, you can only play once per show. And like you mentioned, um, certain wrestlers, um, perform better in certain segment types. So you've got to be aware of what wrestler you're assigning to what type of show. For example, right. one guy might be a better wrestler where another guy might be better at mic spots and another guy might be better at skits. So there's you, like you mentioned, you have to make the right choices in order to earn the most game cash because you're, you only have a limited amount of opportunities. Um, only so many segments per show. And of course, only so many shows per month and, and so on and so on. So yeah, so uh, I'm glad that the strategy aspect is, uh, you know, is is noticed like, and, and like, people, people like it. Yeah, that's the thing. It's challenging, and that's that's one of the things I, I like about the game is you get challenged when other games out there of the same like are just throw this card out there, do this, do that, do that. Right. This actually yeah. makes you think. And yeah. Right on. Awesome. Uh, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, the, 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 I think I think Sorg mentioned the graphics are amazing in this too, even though they're a little minute. Like the, just the pictures, the cards mm -hmm. are pretty cool. Uh, so yeah, great job, man. Well, thanks. Yeah, you know, and, and a lot of credit. I want to give um, a, a lot of credit to the artists. There's 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 two guys in particular that that did the wrestler art. Um, mm -hmm. And, uh, Werner Muck and um, Nathan Trumwalt, these guys are just really, really talented. And, you know, the best part about working with guys, artists like that is, is they're just very easy to direct and they, and they, they understand what we're going for. You know, they know how to make it a little cartoony and, um, you know, they make the bad guys look a little scary. It's still kind of silly and they just hit all the notes, you know, and I just really appreciate the, uh, the work that the artists did on this game, because mm -hmm. I think they brought it all together. What is a uh, so 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 what is what's your favorite character uh, that that you guys came up with in the process here? Oh wow, um, that is a tough one. I mean, I I really <laughs> I know special I, place in my heart for all these guys. I was gonna say um, yeah, yeah. I mean, the, you know, the, the big iconic ones are are, are fun. You know, um, then there are ones that. Um, I didn't know exactly what to expect. And then when the art came back, I was like, wow, I love this guy now. Cause the art is just, just, I love it. You know, for example, there's a character called laser. Um, and he's kind of sting influenced, I guess you say, now I'm talking, you know, blonde hair, neon sting, of course. Um, yeah, 80 sting. you know, but yeah, yeah 80 sting, right. The real sting. Mm -hmm. But, um, no, I, I, you know, that, that's just one guy that I thought, well, okay, this is a fun name and this is kind of a fun, uh, 
you know, he, he should be fun when he comes back. And then when I first saw the art, I said, yes, I love this guy. He's going to be on, <laughs> you know, a lot of the promo pieces and stuff just because I'm just a fan of how he came out. Um, but I like the, I like the lower card guys. I like some of the curtain jerkers too. I like the little, I like a guy like tennis pro, mm-hmm. you know, who, um, who, uh, has a fantastic audio clip up, by the way. And that's another thing I wanted to mention is um, uh, a buddy of mine, um, <laughs> Grant Pachoco, a really talented guy out west uh, in the California area. He, he did the majority of the voices. Um, you know, when you tap on these digital cards and they flip over, you hear a little snippet of sound. Uh, uh-huh. Most of the time, it's a, it's a little piece of dialogue from the character. And, uh, yeah, my, my buddy Grant did just a, an amazing job. Um, so I want to give him thanks, too. That was a surprise because I again you know, like I'm usually my, my audio is typically off because of just the way and where I play. But I happen to have my headphones on when I kicked it on on the train, and I was just like, "Oh, hello!" Uh, and, and again, it adds a whole other <laughs> layer to it. Yeah. yeah, it adds that whole other layer, that whole other eight bit to it, all their fun to it. Um, it's really good. Now, I also want to mention for those wondering, this is a free app on both platforms available now. Um, but you guys are doing a freemium model, and I know. I, we were, I know, uh, Riz, we just had a big conversation about Angry Birds 2 and whether the freemium is too freemium on this. Um, can you talk a little bit about the strategy there? Uh, what, what If I get into this, what am I actually going to pay for uh, when I get in and, and, and want to kind of expand my deck? Yeah, you know, um, it's actually, I mean, so it's free to play, as you mentioned. And mm-hmm. what you're going to do when you, when you start playing for free is you're going to get led um, through the tutorial. And that's, that's going to not only teach you the basics of playing, but it's going to leave you with enough cards in your collection to, you know, be able to sort of proceed at your own pace. Um, now, what what is for sale in the game, the in-app purchases that we offer are, are, are pretty simple and basic, really. We offer tokens. Mm-hmm. Um, so a token can be traded in for, I think it's 100,000 game cash. And what that equates to is one token buys you one main event wrestler. Okay? So... The interesting thing is, though, if you play long enough and if you play well enough, strategically speaking, um, you can earn enough game cash to essentially purchase everything but main eventers. Mm-hmm. Okay, So you'll be gaining at a steady enough rate to purchase all the other stuff besides the main event wrestlers. And then every game year, so for example, you start in January of 1980, when you get to January 1981, you get a free token. Cool. Okay, so you you legitimately can play through it um, and acquire tokens annually in game, you know, without ever purchasing. Now, a lot of people start playing; they love it, and they see a main event guy available in the shop that they must have, that they must add to their collection, that they must give the world championship title to, and they say, you know what? I don't want to wait a game here. Let me buy that token, and um, you know, so so we're seeing a lot of that too. So. That's interesting. And the, the, the kind of randomized shop idea, I, I don't think I've seen in a freemium game. Not that I really dive into a lot of freemium games. It's really just kind of Angry Birds and everything WWE puts out right now. Uh, but uh, mm-hmm. but but that, that, that's an interesting concept with that. Have, have you gotten really good reaction out of uh, uh, the freemium side of it? We have, as a matter of fact. We you know we we the overall response has has really exceeded expectations, and I mean just based on. The feedback I get through social media, and then of course there's the, you know, the ratings and the review process um, mm-hmm. at the App Store and at the Google Play Store. Yeah, you guys are off the um, charts so over on the uh, over on the uh, uh, Google Play Store right now. I'm seeing. Yeah, the ratings are are, are really really. Uh, I mean, we're just we're super pleased, um, mm-hmm. you know, with the reaction. Um, people are are genuinely excited about it, and I mean, you're seeing stuff like this is the most fun thing, you know, and we're saying, wow, well, we didn't expect that, you know, so. Um, it's really, really, you know, um, cool and humbling to hear that kind of stuff. And, um, that this initial feedback, so we, we launched, um, only about two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. So this initial, um, feedback, you know, has really kind of motivated us to get our first big update happening sooner rather than later. Awesome. Awesome. All right. So Uh, go ahead. So honestly, I just want to ask one question. Sure. Is there, are, are there any areas, any particular 80s style characters that aren't in the game that you would like in the game? 
Yeah, I mean, the, the, the short answer is yes. Um, so if you were to pull up a long list of iconic 80s wrestlers, right, from the uh-huh. WWF and NWA and all that, I mean, if you go down and check off name by name, I mean, there's there's lots of names of guys that we don't have a direct, you know, influenced character feature. I mean, I mean, is so, there a name that you won in that game? That you would like in that game soon. Well, let's put it this way. I've got a list. I've got a list of concepts <laughs> that we came up with after launch or, you know, when it was a little too late to stick them in the, to, to the launched uh, version of the game. And we thought, oh, this guy's got to be in it or that this yeah. guy's just, you know, we, we've got we, we didn't put this tag team in there. We need to have. it. So, yeah. So so I'll just put it this way. There's a good 15 or 20 concepts now by concepts. I mean wrestlers, managers, tag teams, and feuds mm-hmm. that just kind of missed the bus this time that we'll get in in the first update. Nice. Cool. Nice. So it's going to be it's going to be the best of the rest, right? Yeah, man. I mean, you know, when you think about, like, that's what's fantastic. You know, pulling from this huge pool called 80s pop culture, I mean, there's just so much stuff. You know, from from the wrestlers to to the movie characters to cartoon characters and uh, TV shows and music and, and and toys and you know all sorts of stuff that that, that we love. You know, um, lots and lots of fun concepts to to be influenced by. So awesome. Awesome. All right. So we're going to, again, adapt some of our regular questions here. Like I said, we usually have indie wrestlers on here. Um, so sure. tell me, well, first of all, uh, this, this still applies. Uh, you got to be watching wrestling now in some vein. So uh, well, what are you watching? What are you, what are you keeping up with in, in, in pro wrestling today? I know none of it is probably as great as the 80s to you. <laughs> but you know, you know what's funny is I, I truthfully, I, do, I don't watch it. Um, uh, uh, you know, I, I really don't. But, I mean, truth be told, I was in Cleveland this weekend for um, the, the Wrestling Geek Fest convention. Nice. 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 Yeah. Nice. So, yeah. So, I saw plenty of, um, you know, indie wrestling. You know, Wait, um, I was there for. Wait. I was did, there for. Mm-hmm. Oh, I was going to say, did you get roped into uh, Joe Dabrowski's Emporium of Craziness where he has. A- <laughs> <laughs> you know, there was so much crazy stuff going on. I was just kind of peeking. I was peeking my head into to every little last thing that, that I saw. I saw a ton of stuff going on there. Um, from from uh, Joe Gagne's uh, video arcade, he had he had video games oh, set geez. up to uh, yeah to, to to some of these these just these indie indie promotions. You know, mm-hmm. from the the Ohio area that I wasn't really familiar with that uh, were really fun. And I wanted to mention there was one in particular that I thought was really cool, and that was um. Old wrestling extravaganza. Oh, yes. You guys know about that? Yes, we are very away. We got Pedro on here talking. Talk on it. We've had a few people that are involved with that. Uh, Jock Sampson, in particular, Gregory Iron is, is a man. Of the, the, we had actually had the bearded woman on here a few weeks ago as well. Oh yes, yeah, sure, sure, so, excellent. So yeah, so uh, I got to meet uh, Marion Fontaine. Uh, you know, nice. who, who I guess does a lot of you know he, he does a lot of the stuff behind the scenes for them and uh, mm-hmm. great guy. And the match they put on, they put on a really fun six-man tag match, and it was just, I was blown away, you know? I mean, it's a small indie show, but these guys, I could tell that it was so well thought out. I mean, just the little intricate things they were doing during the match, was it was a riot. It was funny, it was, it was well thought out, and I just, I want to applaud those guys, so. Awesome, awesome. Okay. I just found, actually found a... a image from there that's a video game style which really kind of fits our theme for today isn't it because i noticed like all the graphics for geek fest were very like uh wwf superstars arcade game style uh whenever yeah. i find them uh here, here's <laughs> one if you guys are on video of uh fontaine gregory iron and uh judge hugo black i'm not familiar with that one there oh no i know who that is that looks like ricky shane page now that i'm thinking about it <laughs> that's who it is yeah the, he he uh, the, the, you know that character that judge character that they were uh prohibitionists you know so that they were they, they have some long, long elaborate team name you know the anti something or other but mm-hmm. it's it's a couple of politicians and a, a a southern baptist judge i guess is what he's playing oh, and, wow uh, they're, they're hilarious that. i, mean, I absolutely hilarious love that guys. like like those those like they're able to stretch and do a different character and have fun with that that's amazing uh that's, mm-hmm. that's great uh, we talked about it before but check out oldie wrestling like look for old add an e on it wrestling google it you'll find stuff there without getting much into it. Anything else or, 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 or are you just good for all the old stuff? (laughs) 
Yeah, that's really it. When it comes to sitting down watching stuff, I, yeah. I, I I'm, I'm, you know, uh, I'm stuck with the eighties. And, and and you know what though, I, I, I was big in the mid nineties. Uh, I'm, I, I'm born and raised in New Jersey, so we got every uh, Saturday night we got um, you know, ECW straight out of Philly. Oh yeah. So, yeah, I mean, you know, mid nineties, it was it was all about ECW. So, uh, and that was about the last time I watched regularly. Awesome. So tell me, uh, coming into this project, uh, you know, seeing it out there, what is the best and the worst thing about indie app game development? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. That's a great question. Um, the best thing I'd say is anyone can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> um, no, really, it's it's really accessible these days. I mean, it's just there's apps everywhere for everything, and almost everyone's got one, right? So it's so it's sort of, I guess, easy to get into. Um, you know, but we take pride in the fact that you know that what we did is is you know original and fun, and a lot of hard work went into it. So. Um, yeah, and then the worst part about it is, um, let's see. Well, I guess since we've launched, you know, now now there's just this big old responsibility to, to, you know, keep it going and 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 answer people's questions and and you know keep on providing content. So you know, now that it's out there, we are we are married to this puppy for forever. You know, so no, it's not a bad <laughs> it's time thing, but... to adult, right? <laughs> yes, that's awesome. That's awesome. So go check it out. 80s Mania Wrestling on Android, uh, iOS platforms. Is it uh, iPad compatible, or are we uh, stretching that for the time being? No, it actually sure yeah. is. It's it's available for the iPad as well. Uh, yeah, I'll have to load that on there as well. Then go check all of that out. And uh, a- a- anything else? You can give us a little preview of what's coming up in that first update. Can you guys say any uh, yeah. exclusives here on the show, maybe? <laughs> well, what I will say is this, is that we are definitely um, planning on, like I mentioned before, you know, continuously adding new, um, you know, wrestlers, tag teams, feuds, that kind of good stuff. Um, a little bit further down the line, um, what we want to do is add a couple of new mechanics to the show process. So as you notice um, now, when you play, we've got um, a few different show types. You know, you've got your weekly shows and then you've got your pay-per-view we call them pay for view Mm -hmm. um the pay-per-views are uh you know your your super cards your super shows and there's a lot of title matches on them and whatnot but what we want to do um in one of these upcoming updates is we've got one in november called survival of the fittest what we want to do is really kind of make that survivor series ish um Mm -hmm. you know so break the mold of just being able to do singles matches and tag team matches you know we're, we're looking to do um six mans and, and eight man tag matches and and along with that maybe have a new type of card called the staple card so instead of just unlocking tag teams maybe if you pair the right three guys together or the right four guys together you'll unlock their staple card nice something like that so there's a little preview of uh, what might be coming up cool cool go check it out we're having is, a lot of fun is there a podcast oh. area going to be in there somehow in the 80s like a skit. <laughs> Uh, a pod- yeah, well, what did they do? With, what, what was the equivalent of a podcast in the eighties? Jeez, oh. college radio. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, you I know, think- actually, we we yeah, we were thinking about you know what kind of um you know so we've got this thing called Mike Spots and we've got and we've got these things called skits you know and we thought mm-hmm. well what what are some fun ones we missed and we thought well you know for for skits we can do a kind of a Pee Wee's Playhouse type thing you know we didn't get Pee Wee in there. Um, and then for uh, Mike Spots, we thought, well, who was you know it was a big you know sort of Mike guy in the eighties. We thought oh, we can get a Howard Stern type guy in there, um, you know. So we'll have like a radio show and a, a you know and a kids variety show in there. So yeah, maybe there's room to, to get some kind of podcast esque thing podcast going on type in the eighties. Yeah, nice. Uh, I, I'm sure we can come up with something nice or a Tuesday Night Titans or something too. You know, I mean. Yeah, you know what? Yeah, something like that. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Go check it out. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Chris, for joining us. Uh, let us know what you thought, think about the app as well. Of course, hit up them on social media. Let us know if you're, ch- you're checking the g- game out as well. Uh, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. We're going to look into some vicious outcast wrestling with Dutters joining us here on the couch in the studio. But first, let's take a look back at last week 
in Sorgatron Media shows. Sorgatronmedia.com now with less professional wrestling. Seeing Mike Tyson get excited about wrestling is like seeing that John Cena kid I talked about a few weeks ago at WWE Live get excited when John Cena comes out. Okay, same thing. Just the light in the eyes of a childlike wonder. That was Will, right? <laughs> <laughs> that was me. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was me. Like, oh, I'm walking down downtown or something like that. Or, hey, I'm sitting here doing a podcast thing. Or I'm sitting at the coffee shop earlier. I'll just take the thing, put it up against my chest. I feel the buzz. It's recording. I look around, do whatever. Maybe I'll do some more motion. Uh, Sorgatron Media is the greatest YouTube channel mm-hmm. yeah. uh, for podcasts. Yes, ma'am. And other material, followed by Epic Meal Time. So. That's the best food related one. Mm-hmm. Right. So and, and, and followed by PewDiePie. Just just put it out there. And only, only recently has he joined the list. No, our mindset's well, that's the way marketplaces are unlocking and enabling. Why spend that thirty grand a year to get that major you never want to use? When you can spend a fraction of it to learn something that you really love. And the beauty of the and I call it the passion economy. Right. I'm familiar with yoga. I've done the DDP yoga, bro, and right. I cannot do that. <laughs> I've tried it, though. <laughs> no. I actually just taught Palace how to do this. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I think I could teach you. You think so? Yeah. Oh, well, well ne- by, by next show. I'm rusty. By next show. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, now uh, let's talk about Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Actually, uh, I did not go to Vicious Outcast Wrestling. I did not. I did not make it. Probably won't this weekend either. Uh, but we'll we'll plug if you are in the area. They're having a great show uh, called the Matinee Massacre down in Brownsville. Um, I will probably be recovering from work the night before, and uh, and I don't think I can make it to where I'm watching SummerSlam in time if I go down over those things. Uh, but anyways, uh, go check it out. Uh, it's actually outside in a drive-in. Uh, so uh, I, this is not the first time they've done this, and uh, go check it out if you like outside shows. A lot of fun, uh, of course. A lot of guys, uh, uh, you know, you're familiar with if you've been listening to this show, are part of this, like Facade um, and and uh, Chris LaRusso and Generation Dead, etc. So go check that out. So uh, with that, uh, so we got a guest in the studio. Dutters is with us. Hello. Hello, friends. At K Dutters on the Twitter. Now, you went to your very first Vicious Outcast wrestling show that is this past weekend. Mm-hmm. Went to check it out, uh, brought some friends, etc. cetera. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so, so well, well, first of all, tell people what kind of attracted you to go check it out this week. Um, I actually, I wanted to see Ethan Carter III uh, versus our buddy Palace. Mm-hmm. Uh, that was one of the reasons I really wanted to go. Um, see that match but uh, it's one of the ones I haven't experienced yet and I've heard a lot of good things about a lot of guys there and I got to see somebody that I've heard an awful lot about that I was not disappointed with (laughs) awesome so what were your takeaways from the show in general versus of course you've been to IWC you've been to RWA Mm -hmm. Ring of Honor uh, WWE I mean you've worked WWE shows uh, being part of Console Energy Center Mm -hmm. Uh, so so you get to see uh, you've seen several sides of that as well and working with us here at Silvertron Media. Uh, so how, how did uh, VOW kind of come off uh, to you in, in, this, in this instance? Uh, I love the production. Mm-hmm. It did not, uh, for the amount of time, I looked at my um, my phone and I was like, wow, that went so fast. Mm-hmm. And, I, and I didn't feel like any of the matches really drug on. I thought uh, everybody, the, the matches were really good. They were very entertaining. It was, it seemed to be more of a story going on than a lot of the other leagues that I've seen or the factions that I've seen that was, it was kind of neat and the guys played into it or the ladies played into it. And, um, I, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a great show and, and the character that I'm speaking of was super, super Oprah. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Sorg has been telling me a lot about super Oprah and I was not disappointed. It was amazing. I got to see super Oprah give a very lovely lap dance to friend of the show, Flex. Flexor, so just Flexor. Yes, a little snippet of it. Um, if you would like to pay nine ninety nine, I will give you the whole video for your enjoyment. <laughs> Which is more than we're going to charge for the digital download eventually, but yes. okay. <laughs> <laughs> for nine ninety nine. There you go, and you can find a loop of that lap dance over on the uh, Indie Wrestling yeah, yeah. Instagram. You can so. tell uh, Flexor is really enjoying it, mm-hmm. yeah, and it does not end as well as. Um, it looks there. No, at no. least not for him. <laughs> certainly not. Certainly not. Uh, but generally, when you talk about the production, like what was it about the production that really kind of uh, 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 you dug over there? Um, I think it was a lot of um, 
there was there was a lot more kind of the storylines were explained if that makes sense a lot of time i go to into these uh go to an indie show and it's kind of like wrestler a versus wrestler b and unless they have a very strong gimmick i really don't there's nothing i i honestly i can't remember their names and Mm -hmm. and there's nothing that really distinguishes them from each other but there was a lot more okay this is what's going on this is why we have a problem and a lot of more inner interludes i guess you would call it in between where the guys were out there discussing you know i'm gonna take down like i heard a lot of trash talk on facade and uh at that particular show but it was a lot more of oh okay that's why this is going on oh that's why you hate so and so um i think the characters were more characters if that makes sense um like derek direction uh, cracked me up amazing heel like just mm-hmm. just a, uh, you're just you just couldn't help but laugh at him um not laugh at his <laughs> not laugh at him like make fun of him but laugh at his character um i enjoyed uh his character like i said super oprah is amazing please go see super oprah if you ever get the chance because that is just phenomenal. Um, the guest I took with me was is Scott from Scarehouse. I don't know if you know the owner of Scott. Um, if you're watching the show or Scarehouse, Scott. Um, but um, this was his first uh, actual wrestling show ever. He's never even seen WWE live, so this is his first ever live wrestling show, and uh, he really got a kick out of it. And he just loved the production. And uh, even though we were talking about the setup and how neat the the setup is there, and how you have the the big screen and the entrance and the lights and how you feel like it's this big time production. I mean, it's, it's, you're like, you feel like it's so big in there and it's, it's, and after it was over, I was like, wow, that's, that, that's really it. I mean, there's not that it's just not a very big venue, but the way they make it feel, it makes it feel so big with the lighting. Mm -hmm. And I just love the fact they were doing that and then, and being in, haunt design and working in haunts you kind of you appreciate those kind of values like wow look what they were able to do with um some lighting and some just the way the stage was set up and where the entrance was and it it was big time i i know i sat right across uh the ring from where they came out and watching the the guys and the ladies come out it was it was serious it was like watching a major production when they, you know they had music, they had a video for a lot, of, a lot of the wrestlers, and just the lighting behind them was just like, whoa, this is cool. Like I took some great pictures of Palace waiting, waiting for EC3, because it was just the way the lighting had hit behind it. It was just like, wow, this is phenomenal. I, I just, I really enjoyed myself. I thought it was great, and and um, there were a couple new guys, um, Xavier. I can't, oh, sorry, Xavier. I can't remember your last name. Um, Xavier, and then black and white straight pants guy. <laughs> <laughs> I pardon me. It was both their debuts, but uh, black and white striped pants guy had the skimpiest um, bottoms I've ever seen, which was he enjoyed it. He, you know, we actually saw his butt at one point. He didn't seem to mind, and uh, the crowd had a lot of things to say to him. Uh, but um, Raver essentially disrupted the match and came out and said, "Hey, you know what? Uh, I don't even know if you're worthy of me fighting you guys. Um, let's go. Let's see what you got." And then he kind of went in there and. Oh man, people love Raver. Raver's mm-hmm. awesome. I just just to listen to the crowd get into you know when he comes out, it's just it's also amazing. And um, I want to talk about uh, EC3 versus uh, Palace, Andrew Palace, and oh my gosh, that was that was such a great match to see. And I mean, you you, I'm a realist. I, I knew going into this, it was for the TNA Championship. I knew what was going to happen. I knew what the result was, but it, you did not watching it. You did not know that. If you had no idea. I think that one of the best parts was uh, one of the other guys brought it up was, was were the kids chanting for Palace. Come on, Palace, because they they were they were in. They were they thought he had a chance, and he really looked like he did. And it was just it didn't it didn't look like uh, some big professional guy coming down and just kind of like I'm gonna take it easy on some local yokum kind of guy yokel. It was it was a match. It was a, a great match, and they went at each other, and it was phenomenal. Awesome. Awesome. I, I mean, and, and, and we, you know, we saw him, of course, in the uh, dudes on TV, like five on five. So, so I mean, there wasn't just a straight one on one match. And now, you, and you haven't seen much of him. Like, you don't watch TNA. No, so I this don't. is this, this, this is your experience with Ethan mm-hmm. Carter, other than just like you know, uh, some of us on the show saying, "Yeah, you need to see this mm-hmm. guy." Right. Well, uh, two things about Ethan Carter will immediately stick out. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize people had those muscles until I saw him in real life. <laughs> it was just like he has muscles on muscles on muscles and i don't think like it was amazing i was just mm-hmm. like i didn't think he didn't look real that's how muscular he is he does not look like he looks like an action figure mm-hmm. but it, he's got that w that's that wwe yeah. look isn't it yes 
And he's got the shoulders. I think it's something about the shoulders that really like just defines it for uh, me, at least for defining a uh, professional wrestler. And he's all, such a classy guy. I, I mean, at the end of the match, he he pulled Palace up and said, you know what? You did a phenomenal job and you were going to just totally talked him up and, and told him he was going to be something. And I thought that was just fantastic to take, a, you know, somebody local to us and tell him that was just it was awesome. And in seeing, you know, knowing, knowing Palace and talking to them afterwards, I knew what it meant to him. And for somebody at the professional level to do that and have that impact on someone, one of our, you know, one of our friends, one of our guys is just awesome to see. Awesome. Awesome. So Vicious Outcast Wrestling, you going back? Oh gosh, yeah. Yeah. As soon as uh, November when I get out, when I have free time. November again. when you get out of uh, uh haunted house season, right? Mm -hmm. so. Oh my gosh, yeah. You may see me again at a wrestling event soon, hopefully. <laughs> uh, in the in the ladies match was um uh, Samantha Starr and oh my gosh, I'm sorry, other girl. I'm terrible at remembering names. It's not something personal. But uh man, they went at it. Okay. And uh De it's Derek Directions um the girl, sorry. I apologize. Was it Girl. one of these? Oh, yeah. It's that lady with the belt. Uh, Brittany Blake, I think, is what who you're looking for. Kool-Aid match. Yes, yes, yes. It was a Kool-Aid match. It was a Kool-Aid match? Yes, it was a Kool-Aid match. What do you mean it was a Kool-Aid match? Oh, yeah. I, didn't even, I was so like nonchalant about that. Yeah, it was a Kool-Aid match. Uh, the loser got dunked in the Kool-Aid. It was a little pool. There was a little pool. I'm sorry. Samantha Heights. Samantha Heights. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Pardon, friends. Um. But uh, there was a little blow up pool on the side of, at you know, the beginning of the matches. And we're like, what the heck is that? And, you know, no idea what's going on. And then, uh, so we found out the Vixen match, which, by the way, I love Vixens. I love that phrasing for women's wrestling, Vixens. Mm -hmm. I absolutely, mm -hmm. I think that's, it's very empowering and it's very just, that, I, I, it's so much better than Divas. It, it, and it's still, like, sexy and yeah. it's still, you know. I would not else. mess with a Vixen. Yeah. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, there's that, like, men's, like, I would not mess with this. What do you think about that uh, crazy colorful belt they have going on there? Oh, I loved it. I thought it was awesome. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, I enjoyed their belts. Oh, I did. Um, oh, so, okay. So, the Kool Aid match uh, was um, the last, last, whoever was thrown in first lost, and Samantha Starr lost. Mm -hmm. But it was fun to watch, and the Kool Aid went absolutely everywhere, and they didn't do a fantastic job cleaning it up. So it was fun to watch the other wrestlers like run out and go, oh, cool day. <laughs> and try to like <laughs> skip around in and not mess with it. Was, it was, it was yeah. fun. It added a fun element to the, to the matches. That's good. And then um, uh, when Ethan Carter handed the belt over to the, the official or the ref, he said, this is heavy as, can I say the F word here? <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. He's like, this is heavy as fuck. And handed it over to the announcer, to the announcer table. Announcer table. So that was funny. I kind of caught that in the side. Awesome. Awesome. Any other takeaways? Um, Legos look like they are painful to wrestle. Oh with. yes, I saw that at the gathering. Mm -hmm. who, uh, who did the, uh, the the Lego match? Uh, well, I don't think. Uh, see, I, I have to admit, I we got there a smidge bit late, and oh. I think there was Legos already in the ring because they had a um, fanny pack look like a fanny pack full of Legos on the side, <laughs> and Derek Direction brought them what? back out. Yeah, the, yeah, it's wrestling. If you don't have a fanny pack, then why, <laughs> why even go? Uh, but then they threw Legos in towards the end of the match, which was fun, uh, painful to watch. And uh, oh, something else cool I thought that they do there um, is uh, they were they were doing some voting. Re fans could vote on who they wanted to see in matches. Okay. Which I thought was really neat in a neat way. They could pick the uh, the the ref and the the guys in the match, hmm. which I thought was a pretty cool tr you know different kind of twist so, on so it. So like, how were they doing the voting then? Uh, you just got a, a blue ballot and you wrote. Really. You turned it in and um, yeah. That's cool. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of a fun, a, a different way to bring in the um, the fans and uh, the fans. Lots, a lot more kids at this show, mm -hmm. I thought. But it was, you know, and people were. I mean, there were some a few people in the audience that said some things that I would not particularly want said in front of children. But overall, uh, great crowd. There's a lot of uh, taint talk in the crowd. Yeah. if I recall. There. I, oh my gosh, it's, it, it's just the thing with that crowd. Yeah, taint and sucks is is like two words that are just specific to wrestling. Yeah. And just for whatever reason, in certain factions, it's taint. And I, like, like anytime heard... there's thumbtacks, there's Pierce's taint. Yes, is a chant. So there was a lot of taint talk. So yeah, I haven't heard taint in a while. But congratulations, you! I heard a lot of taint. But um, overall, I thought the crowd was fantastic. It really into the matches, really enjoyed themselves. Really, you know, I, I like <laughs> conversations between the crowd and the wrestlers because yeah. that's one of my favorite things about indie wrestling is yeah. the interactions and um, some of the the wrestlers in the crowd had some very uh, good we have from the chat room here because we are a little early here live wrestling live dot wrestling mam show dot com uh mad mike uh, uh wants us to make sure to not google uh vixens with three x's or charmy 
Oh, Zebra Pants was Murphy. Murphy. Okay. Zebra Pants Murphy. I, I took, I had some notes because I, I, like I said, I'm very terrible with names. And uh, Zebra Pants Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't sure. think that's his official wrestling Maybe that's name. his Twitter handle, was Zebra Pants Zebra Murphy. Pants Murphy. If not, you know, I could... Yeah, well, but yeah, definitely. It was it was such a good show. I'm like making sure All I didn't right. miss anything else. Oh, at the end of the Pollock, um, Jack Pollock and uh, Nuts, there was controversy. And the official kind of took a beating at the end. Okay. And I, I we he he kind of leaned on the uh, match, or the, um, the ring for a long time, so I kind of was worried about the referee for that match at the end. Even after the lights came on, he was still leaning. And it was match. another wrestler, right? Uh, or no, it was a ref, he ref. he was a ref ref. Oh, okay. Yeah, he was a ref guy. Okay. I didn't hear them chanting. I, that's the other thing I love about indie wrestling is the people know the refs and they yell at them <laughs> specifically. You suck, so and so. You mm-hmm. suck, Jake from State Farm. That's one of our buddies. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so that that was fun. I, I I don't know. I didn't catch his name, but yeah, they were yelling at him. It was fantastic. It was a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, that'll be uh, that is burnt offerings. It should be available uh, sometime within the next month or so from uh, Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Uh, you can catch our digital downloads. They're starting to come up on SmartMark Video, and we of course have them over on IndieWrestling.us as well. Pick your poison there, uh, and uh, of course they have DVDs over at Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Dot com. I think they have a store up there. You can pick it up at the shows if you go down to those. And that's uh, and I guess we didn't really say it. it's actually they, they're mostly out of south of Pittsburgh, uh, typically out of Connellsville, PA. Uh, if you want to check that out, Brownsville is where they're doing uh, their show uh, this Saturday. Go so check that out. That is actually called Matinee Massacre, Massacre this Sunday because there isn't enough wrestling shows this weekend. <laughs> Holy crap! Um, and we'll talk about that here in a moment as. Well, oh, you know who's the superstar? Huh? Doctor, uh, our buddy uh, Derek. Doctor Feelbad. Oh my gosh, they oh, were yeah? chanting his name. <laughs> He's not even in that fed. No, he came to help out. And, yeah, you know, yeah. The crowd appreciated his help, and you mm-hmm. know he was chanting and playing up to it, and it was hilarious. That's great. That's great. Well, there's, I think I think if if not, uh, VOW I think has a lot of crossover with RWA. Mm-hmm. It, I you don't see a lot across between like iwc rwa uh, maybe a little bit of pwx i haven't been to one of those shows for a while but there's definitely crossover between rwa and bow which is nice i think it's cool mm-hmm. that they can go over and um i do if you go to the uh the drive-in show you will get to see our friend of the show wheels as the sound oh, guy oh he's going mm-hmm. down to that man mm-hmm. maybe i will have to make my way down yeah. there son of a i'm not getting any main breaks this weekend <laughs> Nope, nope, no breaks for anybody. We go nonstop. All right, we'll see. Can't we'll see. Maybe I'll be down. Maybe I'll have to go down for that. I don't yeah. know. I don't know. We'll we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. Yeah, but uh, overall, great show. I thought it was fan. I, I really enjoyed myself. Scott, who knows nothing about wrestling, really, really had a good time. I so, actually, uh, I invited him to uh, Saturday's show <laughs> for one of the promotions. I'm hoping I see him uh, pop in there. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping he's got that bug. So. Yeah. I mean, hey, 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 anybody to come to any of these shows and support indie wrestling and discover indie wrestling, I think is a great thing. Even though I was talking to the guy at the top of the hill uh, at the coffee shop and he's like, did you see the wrestling over here? I'm like, yeah. And I had my th- opinions on it and everything. But still, mm-hmm. it's just like, hey, you know, people got to see wrestling and mm-hmm. say, oh, hey, there's indie wrestling. It's not just the WWF stuff. Mm-hmm. And maybe they'll support some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's awesome. All right. Now we're going to get some more indie wrestling here with Eamon. Go, okay. fetus, go. Go, fetus, go. Go, go fetus, go. Go, fetus, go. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, All right, and of course, uh, Dutter is running off. Thank you very much. So let's talk about some other indie wrestling in the area. Of course, we mentioned VOW is going to be on Sunday. But uh, Saturday is definitely the night of too much wrestling. And first of all, to talk about one of the many things that are going on, a show that I really wish, seriously, I really wish I could come to the show. Um, but obligations are, are, are before me. But Sorgatron Media will be representing there. Our representatives will be there filming to bring it to you on IndieWrestling.us. Uh, and it is RWA's aggression. And you guys got so much headlined. I, I, I presume this better be the headline of the night is uh, G Raver against Gory and G Raver's last match with you guys. Yeah. The, um, matter of fact, I was just talking to Gore, uh, Raver over the weekend at the same show Dutters was just at. Um, yep. And I said, You guys are going to tear that house down, aren't you? He's like, We got so much to go. He's like, He's like, Wait and see. I was like, I can't wait. Mm-hmm. And this will more than likely be your main event of the evening because anybody that goes after these guys, I feel bad for. 
Yeah, so. exactly. I mean, they're, 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 they're definitely ones that have really, um, and, and I've heard, and I've heard them at shows like, you know, kind of saying, let us go, just let us rip it. Let's ri- just let us rip it apart. You know, and and I think there's, you know, you've seen in especially uh, the last few months in TLC matches and Falls Count Anywhere matches, what kind of thing will happen. Um, and, and, and putting those two together, I think is going to be just absolutely, uh, tremendous. And I'm looking forward to that. Uh, anything else of note, you guys were covering, of course, uh, a lot of people involved in that, um, in that, uh, 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 war games, a bloody, bloody war games match. There has to be a lot of fallout from there. I know I've seen, uh, Memfo Mofo was making fun of Shane Andrews and Jesse Bell. I guess there's going to be a mixed tag match, right? Yes, there was a mixed tag of Jesse Bell and... Shane Andrews versus a mofo mm-hmm. and Sarah Dox. And as you said, there has been video back and forth all today. I mean, if people, if you follow at RWA Pro on the Twitters, you see the back and forth between the mofo and Jesse and Shane Andrews. And as Sorg showing you right now, on our website, we put it right there. For you to see, it's amazing. Just this war isn't over. Awesome, great stuff, great stuff. A lot going on there. Um, so, uh, so, and we even have a title match and all that craziness. Oh shit! There's a title match. Uh, of yeah. course, uh, Nick Nick Estevan Taylor against Wise, wise Guy Jimmy Cicero is an old time guy. Uh, you know, he's been on Raw a few times. Um, so uh, Espon, Nick Aspon Taylor is, is one that's uh, really grown on me. Uh, Bad Boys Club in general has really grown on me, and, and of course the on the RWA audience as well. Uh, so it's really cool yes. to see them kind of coming around and being come, kind of the good guy faction a bit. They're still the bad boys, but still. But they still know how to wreck your life. <laughs> mm-hmm, exactly. Uh, also, uh, another other area favorites, uh, Ryan Edmonds against Ashton Amherst in a grudge match. Uh, you know, again, first kind of time a, ever face it, to face. Really, it is the first time. I guess they've been on yes. kind of on the same side in, in in past iterations, right? Yes, they've both been on the same side in the Feel Bad Five of all things. Mm-hmm. Now it's basically the first time ever these two versus each other. I I kind of build it in my own mind, and sometimes posting certain things, it's like. The Battle of the Feel Bad Five members. Mm-hmm. Both are former RWA heavyweight champions. Both are former members of RWA's Feel Bad Five. So it's going to be a very, coin of phrase, aggressive type show. Awesome. Go check it out if you're in the area. West Student, of course, uh, both these shows. You don't have to pick afterwards or if you're not even in the area uh because both shows will be available on indie wrestling.us in the coming week or two so please go check that out and support uh, in, uh indie wrestling uh the other one i had to mention is iwc's cage fury their big show of the summer uh of the end of summer uh a really uh, really marquee match holy crap on this one uh cage match the return for the iwc heavyweight championship tommy dreamer and rhino uh, that's going to be very, very big. As I mentioned uh, uh, previously in, on Wrestling Ma'am show, uh, they got a, a local guy, a local wrestling and radio legend, really. Uh, Bubba the Bulldog is joining the Founding Fathers in uh, in the War Games match against the Faces of Change. Uh, we've had a few of those guys on over the, the past few months, and uh, that's going to be a crazy, crazy thing when you get these guys involved. And, uh, of course, uh, and another guy I mentioned with celebrities before, Mark Madden, he's going to be there doing his uh, uh, Q&A pre-show Uncensored, uh, if you want to go check that out. He's got... I have uh, uh, listened to a little bit of the pre-show before, or his Q&A before. I've heard some of these stories on the set of uh, Share Shot Reality before, um, and uh, it, it's it's great stuff. Uh, whatever you thought of him in WCW, you liked or hated him, um, he's still... Uh, he's not called the super genius for no reason except for maybe a little bit of ego but no Madden's a really cool guy to talk to and he's there somebody that's been there not just like what you saw on tv he did a lot of behind the scenes stuff at wcw as well um you know more on the media side i think uh but but still he was definitely a part of it so uh it's going to be a very very interesting uh, uh show either that other than that Britt Brit baker who we had on just last week uh is going to be on a one-on-one match against ray lynn 
Uh, so really, really interesting. So, and, and great to see just women's wrestling in general uh, with this three-way with Dylan Bostic, Alex Daniels, and Andrew Palace, which is really a rematch from the finals of uh, Super Indie for the Super Indie title. Uh, a lot of lot of stuff going on there, and both all three guys really ripping it up in general on the Indies. So awesome to see. I'm sorry, Riz, did you have something you were going to say? Oh no, go ahead, George. Okay, uh, uh, Jock Samson. Uh, uh, Castle bearded for your pleasure, which may be the second greatest uh, tag team name in recent. Right next to. Right next to the greatest tag team name, the sexy talented dudes, <laughs> our friends Chess Flexor and Corey Futuristic, Wardlow, Jimmy Nuts, Asylum Crimson, and uh, this is the most uh, scary picture of uh, Mark Madden I've ever seen. So. That is locked, frightening. Get locked in a room for an uncensored Q&A pre-show with the evil and diabolical Mark Madden. <laughs> so uh, go check out all that stuff. Uh, Justin LeBar of Share Shot Reality is a part of that as well. IWCWrestling.com. And as I said, that's also going to be on IndieWrestling.us. As is eventually that matinee massacre. I, I think I've given them three different names because I keep forgetting which one it is. I'm sorry. ViciousOutcastWrestling.com to get all the details on that show as well. Um, and, uh, wow, is that everything? Because not over that, only that, there is SummerSlam, which is now four hours that we talk about on the Wrestling mm-hmm. Mayhem show. And during both of these shows, because we're watching when we get home late at night, is NXT TakeOver from Brooklyn. So exactly. A the- weekend full of wrestling folks come on so i know I this mean, is... if you're a wrestling fan just just strap in and just get your eyeballs glued to your tvs and watch whatever you can so i want to touch Cause... on that for a moment because i and this maybe is i uh, could be just a phenomenon we're having here in the pittsburgh area and wait is the other i think they moved the i think pwx to pwx might have moved their show uh, which is probably for the best considering everything going on there. Uh, but, I mean, th- if you're a wrestling fan in the Pittsburgh area, well, one, great, you have a lot of choice. Um, I don't know if this helps on the other side of things. Does this help wrestling to have this many shows on a weekend? Um, not to not to, not to, to paint you in a the corner there, Wheels being part of one of these groups. No. Uh, you're no, not part of the okay. bookie. I, it, 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 it kind of... Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> no, I was going to say, uh, it's kind of funny you mentioned it that way. It's uh, uh, going a little bit ahead uh, next month in September. You know of uh-huh. what we're going to be going against. Yeah. Uh, and, well, and Impact Wrestling is coming. TNA yes. Wrestling is coming. Literally right down the highway from you guys. Like, real, real freaking close to where you guys are doing a show already. Yes, and it was funny because after this past weekend show, we found out we're on TNA's radar. Oh yeah, because they knew that they they're like, wait a minute, because I talked to that champion, Mister Ethan Carter III, and he's like, yeah, we heard we have a show again the same day as you guys. That should be interesting. <laughs> I went so. TNA knows of RWA. I gotta say, well, it's not hard to look up indie wrestling and and a region and find out who's there. And if there's, and you know, for whatever questions you have of how TNA operates, I'm hoping there's somebody there that's involved in something like that. You know, that knows something like that. And of course, Sanjay Dutt is has been involved and at tapings and part of the show recently. So maybe that's a conversation that came up there. Uh, Which, and actually, you guys have Sanjay Dutt on that day. I we guess have he's Solange a Solange and Amazing Red. Yeah, so um, I that's okay. That's going to be good to go against TNA at least. Uh, we do have, yeah. and then Ring of Honor is going to be again down the road in Cal, Cal U, a little further, I guess. Um, uh, that like, next, like almost a little bit of a week later. That next Friday, which I think is followed yeah. by a Saturday night of IWC, if I if I have my dates correct. Um, what the so hell? September's going to be busy. It, it is. It <laughs> is. I thought, I thought August was rough. Not so much with the wrestling, I guess, because you guys all freaking compacted them in one weekend. But anyways, um, <laughs> thankfully, this is my only double booking between you guys. Um, and I understand. I say, and I understand. This is, nothing, this is nothing that you guys... I know you guys kind of um, uh, tried to... IWA is the ones that have the dates first. You you guys give me your dates in like October or November, and then I watch yeah. the rest of my year to get destroyed by everybody else. Um, and that's not exactly. even a slight on anybody else because they're not looking at you 
they and and they're given the dates that they're given. They don't have much wiggle room, right? Uh, with the venue. I was going to say, you, there's only so many months, like weekends in a month. Right, have, right, right. And and, somebody and, somewhere is going to overlap somebody. And you know the guys down the road. Uh, actually, you know the guys, I think, both ways down the road um, are, are, are in venues where they have other activities going on. You know, be it basketball, volleyball, skating, sock hops, whatever the hell happens in that other building. Um, so, so again, um, I, they're just like, these are the dates, and that's pretty much all you can do. I know the discussion has been, well, we can't really hit a date with this venue here. I guess we'll go to the other one, right? Um, yeah. I mean, that, in, I don't even know when that last time I heard that conversation, but, um, <laughs> but, 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 but still, I mean, that's part of it, right? And, 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 right. and there's only so much they can do to make sure, and, and really how much crossover is there, right? Um, yeah. I, I think, uh, uh, obviously we were just discussing, uh, we were just discussing with others earlier, I think about that crossover. I do see a lot of your RWA fans at FEOW, but they're, a, they're a bit mm -hmm. away. It, it's not, you guys, you yeah. guys have a working relationship and I think that's probably a part of it. Cause I, I think you, you, de you promote each other a little bit at each other's shows. So of course there's going to be crossover. Um, but I yeah. don't see the same faces at IWC. So I don't think between you two, I don't think there's going to be any hit in numbers. I haven't seen in the past when you run against each other. Right. And you guys are very close. Yeah, I mean, you, you guys are so close. All of my workers are going to come help set up at IWC first and just go down and do your show. <laughs> like, like that, it's that yeah. easy to do. Then you guys are going to meet at Denny's, like right in between both of your guys. See? And yeah. And I mean, it's a good old, I don't know about us with Denny's after that because I got to get up for the next day. We're going to sit at Denny's uh, and watch NXT yeah, TakeOver on our phones on WWE Network because we couldn't have watched it. Yeah. So no spoilers. Do that. No spoilers yeah. during our shows, ladies and gentlemen. Don't tag us. All right, that's enough on mm. that. Any last <coughs> thoughts on that? We got to get out of here before well, a freaking spider see. attacks me again. You know what, folks? You know what you need to do? Just support some indie wrestling, like myself and the Riz and the Sorgatron. And and please hit us up, <coughs> Wrestling Man Show on the Patreon. Visit indiewrestling.us so I can afford some spider repellent. While I podcast, there you go, there you go. Indie wrestling, uh, you, no, no, this is the Indie Mayhem Show at wrestlingmayhemshow .com, at Mayhem Show on the Twitter. Uh, please drop us a line. Good times at wrestlingmayhemshow .com. Uh Let us know what you thought of our interview. Anybody else you think we should interview, or the hotline four one two two zero six WMS zero. Thank you so much, the Riz, for joining me at the sure. e Riz. Riz sure, plays games and insert coin to begin dot com are your video game properties. And he also joins us uh, from time to time. Well, a lot of times on a wrestling mayhem show. He's a mainstay. He's one of the he's mm. one of the uh, the inner I'm circle from from last uh, on Christmas. I was a host. There you go. Officially. Officialized. Officially. And also and with my eyes are on the shirt. Yes. And also, of course, Wheels, wheels at Hot Wheels at Hot Wheels no. RWA and RWA Live dot com. You'll see them down there, him down there Saturday or Sunday at Vicious Outcast Wrestling. Make sure to rub his noggin. <laughs> I'm not people telling people to like what do we say, chop you or kick you in the nuts or whatever that it is we do with Amy and Mad Mike. So. Yeah, we're we're, we're yeah. not going to repeat what uh, we're mm. going to what people do to Mad Mike. But hell, but if we, you're we right. people to do the Mad Mike, but. If you're going to NXT TakeOver, look for Mad Mike as well. He will be there, and you can Give him a hug. Yeah, hug him. You can hug him. I forgot. I was going to say something not quite as nice. Thank you, everybody. I'm Sorgatron. We'll see you guys next time. Support some indie wrestling. No, I'm for the face to the floor. Sick, sick, sick. You know how I act now. If you got a problem, come and see if I'm a back down. Act wild. Steady sipping check. Show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. Hi, everyone. Do you like video games? Do you like reading about video games? Do you like listening to podcasts about video games? Why don't you check out insertcointobegin.com? New articles going up daily, and you can check out our podcast, Boss Battle, on sorgatronmedia.com. <laughs>